students in the in our class lah basically yeah all right um now let's continue with our lesson i think you should be able to do the rest of the activities but i'm going what i'm going to do is uh well i'll just uh guide you through this activity the numbering might be different eh, with your slide because for in your slide i uh, edited i kind of standardized the number of activities already so this is the earlier slide that i'm using because uh, it has all the solutions here now, uh, we have here a trapezoidal channel. So normally, question comes without the diagram. So normally, you might want to draw, sketch out the diagram, okay, according to type of uh, section given. So it has a bottom width of 25 meter, the side slope 1 to Z, or Z would be the horizontal. 1 is vertical, which is denoted by V, cap, uh, uppercase V, eh, capital V. So you have there Z, Z will be what 2.5, right? Carries discharge of 450 meter cube per second. This is a huge uh, discharge. Uh, imagine you have 450 meter cube flowing at a section over one second, all right? With normal depth, uh, normal, we have learned that in chapter one, right? Normal or uniform depth we could use it interchangeably in our class, in our syllabus, uh, although there might be some difference due to the slope, all right? Um, now, you have uniform depth to 3.5 meter. Now, here's the thing. Elevations at beginning and end of channel, that means the upstream and the downstream of the channel is they are 685 meter and 655 650 meter respectively that means you know that the beginning or the upstream should be 685 meanwhile the downstream should be 60 650 because of course how does the water flows or how uh, you know flow flows is due to gravitational uh, force and is due to the gradient which should be from higher ground to lower ground so your upstream would be 685 meter and downstream is 650 meter now um, i'm going to repeat this in bahasa uh, macam mana aliran bergerak ialah mestilah aliran bergerak disebabkan oleh daya graviti iaitu disebabkan oleh terdapat kecurunan kan ataupun gradient di uh, pada dasar saluran lah. Jadi dia mestilah mengalir dari kawasan yang tinggi ke kawasan rendah. Jadi 685 meter itu ialah uh, hulu manakala 650 meter ialah ketinggian di hilir saluran eh masing-masing. Uh, so sekarang ni um, now the question asks you to find the length of the channel if manning if many roughness coefficient is 0 0.02, okay. So you have all the those, you know, parameters for your Manning equation already. The only thing unknown would be your S0. S0, here's the thing, the concept would be, let's go here. Look at this diagram here. Yeah? I'm going to enlarge this diagram just a second. Um, so this is the, oops. Okay. Now, this would be, you know, what I'm describing just now. You have your upstream 655. Now, you might want to know where does this 655 measured from. I'm not sure you have already taken your survey in, during your, you know, um, diploma studies. Or, you know, um, this is a simple, you know, um, actually simple representative of the height. Imagine that there is a datum, all right? Datum would be a straight horizontal line. Okay, the height measured, the upstream, the height measured from the datum is 685 meter. Meanwhile, of course, it is based on a certain ben uh, temporary benchmark, lah, all right? Uh, and then uh, on the downstream, it's, six, it's 650 meter, all right? Therefore, all right, how do you determine the slope, the bed slope of your channel? This is the longitudinal. You, you know that this would be your cross section 
and this is your longitudinal section eh when the keyword itself longitudinal of course along the channel right so you cut across the uh, along the channel you have the longitudinal section now the slope of the longitudinal uh, slope of the channel would be uh, S naught is equal to tangent alpha or what would be tangent alpha? Tangent alpha, of course, is a vertical divided by the horizontal. Uh, it could be in meter, of course, when you divide some a unit, of course, it will cancel off. Eventually, your S naught would be dimensionless or there's no unit, lah, basically. Yeah? Okay, so this longitudinal slope or the bad slope or uh, the bottom channel bottom slope would be the vertical divided by your horizontal horizontal means this this horizontal eh? okay now vertical is the that means vertical height would be the difference 685 minus 650 so you are going to have 35 meter there all right so the difference of height and then what is the distance the length i told you the question says the length of the channel. You probably want to find the sloping length. But since your slope or alpha is very small, because you know that you've been using a small slope, right? It's zero, like 0 0.001, 0 0.0001, okay? If, since S0 is small, you know, the sloping length and the horizontal length would not differ much. You could try it out, all right? You can find it out. There, there might be, you know, some, um, either there's a difference in decimal points or, you know, just up to one or two meters, all right? But this is a long uh, length, lah, basically, right? So I don't mind if you just give me the answer of L, which is the horizontal, instead of you need to find again. Uh, the sloping length. Of course, you can use alpha lah to find the sloping length. Um, am I going too fast, guys? Guys? No, doctor. Boleh, eh? All right. <laughs> okay. Now, so therefore, let's go back, eh? All right. Now you know what we want to find already. Basically, we need to determine S0. Once we determine S0 from Manning equation, we can find our L. Okay, because we know uh, S0 is equal to 685 minus 650 divided by L. All right, so uh, the first thing we need to find is uh, S0, lah, basically. Yeah? Um, now, this is all given. So trapezoidal section, you have the cross-sectional area is uh, B times Y plus ZY squared, all right? So substitute those, uh, the given values, you are going to get your flow area. And then weighted parameter, the parameter being weighted would be B plus 2 Y square root 1 plus Z squared, all right? So hydraulic radius, therefore, is uh, A over P. So you have there, all right? So um, this is just, okay, I need to go back, all right? Okay. Oops. All right, therefore, substitute in your many equation, uh, you are going to get your sloping, uh, the slope of your longitudinal, uh, the longitudinal slope of your channel, you are going to have uh, 0 0.00155. So uh, I think, okay, uh, this, there's no many equation already. This is not many equation, eh? Okay, it's just a slope, all right? So therefore, the slope would be delta Z Delta Z, this is different Z, eh? uh, this is the difference in height, eh? which is 685 uh, with 650 divided by LH. LH would be the length horizontal, all right? Not, not really, not exactly the sloping length or the length of the channel, all right? So you have there, length would be uh, 22,601.1 meter. All right, so you have that. That's why I told you, you know, your slope is very small. So you are, there's no different 
between you know the sloping length and also the uh, horizontal length um i'll give you full mark even if you give me horizontal length but as long as you understand all right the difference of horizontal and the sloping length is fine enough okay there's another uh, activity here uh, which asks you to find roughness coefficient now this chapter right half of main 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 part all right most of it re revolves around you, you know how to use manning and chazy equation to solve uh, for a hydraulics problem um, however you know it depends on what variables uh, are given so you need to solve for you know the unknown parameters lah, basically for in this case uh, you are you are asked to find the roughness coefficient C, which is the chazy. So since you have chase coefficient C, you know you are going to use chazy coefficient. So you, 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 if you look at here, all right, you know already it's chazy uh, equation. Once you look at chazy equation, right, you are going to get which variables are provided and which are not. So if you look at here, the slope is provided. Uh, you know, you need to find this uh chazy coefficient this charge is provided so depth of flow is provided as well if depth of flow is provided of course you can uh, find the flow area and the hydraulic radius already okay now look at here um apex angle the 60 60 degree eh? okay uh let's enlarge this a bit okay i'm going to find If you look at this, right, the apex angle is 60. And now, how do you find the z, the horizontal scale of the side slope, all right, which is the z. So if you look at here, all right, so half, you know, I'm trying to find z. It doesn't matter if I draw it outside, you know, the, uh, the, the how, if I want to determine z, I draw it outside of the triangular or inside, it doesn't matter. It's still the horizontal and vertical scale of this slope here. All right, so if I draw it like that, right, so the angle, all right, that this sloping uh, side of the triangular makes with the vertical line will be half of 60 degree, which is 60, uh, 30 degree then, all right. Uh, definitely this will be 60 because the summation of all the angles in the triangular is 180, right, because this is the right angle, right, which is 90 degree. So now how do I find Z? Z would be, what relates Z and 1 would be tangent 30. Ten, so tangent 30 equals to Z divided by 1. So therefore Z would be tangent 30 degree, all right? Or, or, okay, now if you decide to take 60 degree, which is at the opposite side, eh? 60 degree, uh to find z okay tangent 60 degree would be equal to 1 over z therefore z will be 1 over tangent 60 degree you look at this you are still going to get the same value of z all right which is 0 0.5774 so no matter which angle you are using all right option one or option two you'll get the same answer all right okay Alright, okay, now, um, then, once you have solved for Z, right, now, let's look at this. Once you have solved for Z, of course, you know you're, you are going to use KZ. When you read the question already, you know, because uh, they ask you to find KZ reference coefficient. So substitute in those values, of course, before that, you need to solve for your uh, cross flow cross sectional flow area and hydraulic uh, radius where you need weather parameter lah, basically eh? so for a triangular channel the flow area is given as that y squared all right so y would be 0 0.8 help me check i'm not sure whether have i you know i'm and am i missing a square there you could check for me yeah uh, of course, I think you have your Excel with you, right? Or calculator with you. 
could you just, you know, try to calculate? Do I get the same answer as 0 0.3695? Yes. yes. Uh, that means that means I really have square it, right? Okay. So remember, uh, I'm missing square here. That means it should be 0 0.5774 times 0 0.8 square. All right. So you'll get 0 0.3695. Uh, luckily, this is correct. Eh? Okay. Um, now, for weather parameter, the same thing. Okay. Now, in this case, right, if you look at the formula that I'm using, okay, I said, I don't want to find R, okay? I'm going to substitute my R. What I'm going to do is, you see, I know that, um, can I use my camera now? But I need to flip it, okay? It's, it doesn't matter. Now, I know now that my A is to the power, if I make it, all right? I make it the same denominator, which is two. A is to the power of 2 over 2, which is equal to 1, am I right? Okay. Now, what is my R? R is A to the power of 1 over 2 divided by P to the power of half or 1 over 2 as well. Now, you know that, you know, uh, multipl multiplying, you know, uh, the same uh, multiplying 2 uh numbers or, or, or in this case two symbols all right uh, with a power when multiplying you are going to add the power together so you have here two over two a one over two so therefore you are going to get a to the power of three over two now of course your p remain the same all right because you are not multiplying any uh another p so therefore, P is, uh, the power of P will be remaining half, all right? Remains half, all right? So therefore, uh, I kind of combine it because in subsequent chapter, you might want to use combination, all right? To solve for um, uniform depth. Basically, so far, you haven't solved for uniform depth. You have already solved for S0, Manning coefficient, uh, maybe bottom width and things like that. So there will be question where you, you know, all the other parameters are provided, but you need to solve for your Y, all right? So you substitute A and P, which you have already found, okay? Uh, now, just in case you still don't understand, let me know later, all right? Uh, I can, uh, you know, uh, type it for you or write it, for, write it down for you so that you can understand. Now, therefore, you know, substitute all those values, you are going to get your C equals to 23.68. Now, you know that this value, right, uh, well, it described that your channel is quite rough as well, all right? Um, smooth channel, it could be like, you know, higher, 50. You've been using Chazy roughness coefficient before, right? All right, 50, 55, all right, will be smooth, concrete, right? So you have there uh, your Chazy coefficient, okay? Now, this exercise, um, okay, now, this is the first exercise that involves, you know, uh, that want you to find the depth of flow, right? I highlighted, I highlight it in red color. Now, this is a sim simpler shape, all right? I wouldn't say simpler, I think triangular would be sim simpler to solve, all right? Okay, easier to solve, like, basically, all right? So this is a tri rectangular uh, channel, okay? The discharge would be 0 0.8 meter per second. Now, all right. Uh, I purposely give you meter per second here. Am I wrong? Oh, I think it should be meter cube over second. Okay. Uh, this is, this correct, this one, uh, it should be 0 0.8 meter cube per second, all right? Um, all right. It should be, eh? Okay. Because my calculation, I use, uh, okay, because in my calculation, I use this as Q. Uh, sometimes, I will let 
Even this one, uh, I wrote it incorrect. Uh, you should put a three there, meter cube per second. Uh. Discharge is always meter cube per second. Sometimes, all right, I will give you discharges to at 0 0.8 meter over second. You should write it as V, velocity. Okay, normally in your test or final exam, we, we, we would go through it at least three times to check the solution. So, so that there wouldn't be any mistakes, lah, all right, in your question. Um, but in this case, because I think I'm using 0 0.8, right? Okay, I didn't look at it properly. It should be meter cube of a second, okay. Now, the best slope is 0 0.009. Manning roughness coefficient. Aha, uh -huh, Manning is given. So, you know that you are going to utilize Manning uh, roughness flow equation, which is this guy here, all right? Uh, uh, this is the one, all right? Uh, now, uh, which is given, and then find the depth of flow. Um, here's the thing. This many uh, roughness flow equation, Q and S0 are all provided, straightforward. But your depth of flow is actually in your flow area, cross-sectional flow area, and your uh, hydraulic radius. There will be unknown Y. So therefore, okay, you need to write your A and R or P, okay, in terms of Y. Okay, for example, in this case here, what is my flow area? Since I don't know my depth of flow, I'm going to use Y naught. Here I'm introducing Y naught. Now it's actually Y naught is normal depth or uniform depth of flow. Okay. Uh, later, I'm going to introduce a new uh, Y, Y subscript C, which is the critical depth of flow. So O means, you know, normal depth or uniform depth. Now, how do you find Y naught? Is you find it using either Chazy or Manning equation. I hope you, you still remember uh, this chapter is chapter 2, which is on uniform uh, depth of flow. Uh, well, uh, analyzing uh, uniform flow, eh? all right. Now, um, so flow area would be three times y naught. Okay. Wetted parameter would be y naught plus three plus y naught. That means b plus two y lah, which is three plus two y naught. All right. So discharge or Manning equation is. Um, one uh, is given as this, but, okay, I know that my A and R are still in the form of, uh, as a function of Y naught. So what, what I did is I rearranged uh, all the other equations in terms of A, R to the power of 2 thirds. If you look at on your right hand side, okay, this is a, a rearrangement of this equation, all right? So now here's the thing. That's why I asked you, I told you earlier that it is important eh, to know how I combine this expression. Now, of course, in this case, right, for this one, we look at Chazy. The, the power of hydraulic radius is 1 over 2. Now, the power of hydraulic radius is 2 over 3. Okay, or 2 third lah. So, therefore, I want to make my flow area or A with having the same denominator. So I know that A, this is A to the power of 1, which is also to the power of 3 over 3, three, over three because it, it's still 1, right? So I have A to the power of 3 over 3. Now, this is A to the power of 2 over 3 divided by P to the power of 2 over 3. So if I combine A to the power of 3 over 3, uh, the, the power would be, you know, you sum it up, to, it will be uh, 3 over 3 plus 2 over 3. Therefore, A should be to the power of 5 over 3. All right, there's a mistake here. Eh? So, A should be uh, to the power of 5 over 3 divided by P to the power of 2 thirds. Okay, so therefore, you can substitute this, which, which are given. Now, A... You already found it, found it here, all right? P also substitute the expression in there. Now, how are you going to solve for Y naught? Okay. 
Um, all of you are using scientific calculator, am I right, guys? Yes, doctor. Okay. Yes, doctor. All right. Now, uh, later on, I'm going to share a YouTube video that teach you. But if you if try it out first. If you have problem, you want you probably want to look at that YouTube video on how to solve this expression. Because this expression, even if you bring the denominator to your right hand side, you are not going to solve uh, easily or directly solve it. You can you cannot, right? What you need to do is in your calculator, you need to do to, you need to solve the, this expression. That means you are going to write this expression. That means you open bracket three times. Now your Y would be, you know, just a symbol. I think you, you can use X or Y, it doesn't matter. Close your bracket to the power of 5 over 3 divided by the denominator. The same thing, right? You write it out in your calculator. Then I think you need to press the button soft, all right? Actually, I don't have calculator with me because um, I, do, I normally work on excel all right so therefore you have to try it out but uh, nevertheless i'm going to share you know a youtube video which guide you on how you are going to solve this easily using your cal uh, scientific calculator you have to learn this remember uh, this is third week all right you are not that busy so please Play, uh, you know, spend, you have another one hour later, spend some time to solve this. I'm going to find out, uh, find where the YouTube video is, all right? So, uh, why uh, solve this to get why not equals to, the answer will be 0 0.4264. Huh? Uh, why, later on I'm going to share this uh, uh, on you, my YouTube channel as well, the, our, uh, our class here. Um, now, why I want you to learn how to solve this? Because chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, probably there will be question where you need to find your uniform depth first before you can solve the other ones, uh, for the other variables. Now, you know that when it involves further step, once you get why not incorrect, all right, and uh, therefore your other solution might be affected by the answer, all right? Um, now, another thing, okay, if you do it manually, all right, if you say, you say you want to check, what if I substitute why not uh, as 0 0.1, what would, you know, this give me, all right, so that means I substitute, that means what, what would A to the power of 5 over 3, or basically which is this, uh, AR to the power of 2 third value it should be the same as qn over s not uh, to the power of half right which is 0 0.6133 so i substitute 0 0.1 i'll get this so i say hey, it's too small uh, which is smaller than 0 0.6133 so i increase my y not again up to 0 0.5 then oh it's exceeded already so i know that my y not value should be between this uh should be between 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 because uh, in between this, I can get 0 0.6133. So, therefore, now, sometimes, you know, you, you can use calculator, you know, to, find, to solve for this. However, look at the question properly. Sometimes the question asks you to solve it using graphical method. If using graphical method, you need to have this why not in AR to the power of two third values because you need to plot it in the graph because the question asks you to solve it using graphical method. Now, why, uh, why uh, graphical method is, why, why they want, you know, you have calculator, it's technology, everything already, why you still do it manually? Now, if you do sometimes, all right, for example, software or whatever if you just key in value you don't really understand what is it about all right the expression now in order for you to understand you can substitute this then you you are going to realize as 
why not increase, all right, uh, the AR, the power of two-third increases as well, all right. Uh, later on, you are going to learn that this term is also known as section factor, all right, in this chapter as well. This is known as section factor. But of course, later on, we are going to learn about there's another term which is conveyance factor where you have this section factor divided by your divided by your uh, roughness coefficient or for chasey is the multiplication of your uh, chasey roughness coefficient right that means you, you are going to learn the other you know uh, let's 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 uh, drop this first okay the other subsequent slide will show it all right so let's look at uh, focus back on our uh, solution here so therefore um you have already solved it either using calculator or you can do try and error this is manually where you have calculator you substitute why not you are going to get all this value manually right okay so there you have it uh, you already solve it i believe this is similar uh, exercise as the previous one that I talked about. So you might want to try this out yourself, all right? So you have all those without the solution. If you want to look at solution, go to the YouTube, all right? But uh, at the end of the uh, chapter, please let me know if you want me to share the PDF of including all the solution, right? Uh, just ask for it, okay? Uh, sometimes I, it just slip my mind, right, to share it. All right. Um, now, uh, just now I talk about conveyance factor, right? Okay. Now, um, I'm going to finish. Uh, in, uh, I'm going to finish another ten minutes, all right? Because I actually have meeting at nine, all right? Um, well, I have promised you, right? It's just going to be one hour. Now, what is conveyance factor? Now, the term conveyance. Convenience K or convenience factor. That means how good a channel convey something. Convey means transport something, lah, all right? Uh, how good it is. So the, the definition provided in, on the slide here, it says measure of carrying capacity of channel section per unit longitudinal slope. Uh, it is directly proportional to discharge Q, of course. Now, you see? Measure of carrying capacity, which is Q of the channel section per unit longitudinal slope. That means Q divided by S naught to the power of half. So therefore, K equals to Q naught divided by S naught power half equals to C A R to the power of half. This is for Chasey. Meanwhile, for Manning would be Q divided by S naught half equals to 1 over n a r to the power of 2 third s not to the power of half all right so this would be your conveyance factor now uh, conveyance how do i find conveyance if give if uh, a certain question asks i could find conveyance of the channel using q divided by s not to the power of half or i could use the formula c times a times r to the power of half for chasey lah, meaning you have 1 over n times a times r to the power of 2 third. Eh? Okay, so I hope by now you understand. Now, the symbol for conveyance is uppercase or capital K. Eh? Alright, so you have that. Uh, I could find, find K equals to C A R to the power of how or equal to Q over S naught to the power of half. Alright, so it's the same. Now, uh, I talk about Ch section factor two. Now, uh, remember, eh, this is not difficult to define. When you remember conveyance, you know that it should be Q discharge right over the slope right. So Q over S naught. Um, I don't mind if my question asks you to define. You give me the formula, the right formula. <laughs> okay, I don't mind without. Because the formula itself, you un you already described the definition, right? I don't mind. Only for my class, huh? all right? Okay. Now, section factor, uh, which is um, this is uppercase Z, yeah. It's different from that uh, the side slope Z, yeah, which is a lowercase that we use a symbol. So this is uh, uppercase Z. 
Um, in the Manning formula is AR to the power of two third, which is a function of that of flow. Now, uh, how do we, let, let us look at this, all right? Now, just like I, uh, I told you, I want to find why not. Now, I know that, you know, why not is actually exists in my flow area because why not affect flow area as well as the wetted parameter. All right, if Y increase, of course, A will be increased as well, right? Um, this should, well, depends, all right? Okay, it depends on the shape, okay? It could uh, increase or decrease, all right? So you have there, well, relatively it will increase. Uh, okay, you have there, um, um, uh, this is the suction factor, basically. Uh, therefore, Z is equal to AR to the power of 2 thirds equals to QN over S0 to the power of half. This is bending, eh? KZ would be uh, A times R to the power of half equals to uh, Q divided by C times, uh, divided by S to the power of half, all right? So, uh, how do I define Z? Z equals to this. How do I define Z? Remember, you know that the section factor would be this symbol, right? Therefore, it's, you know, automatically you automatically you remember that this term would be the, would be the, uh, in the function. Uh, it's a function of depth of flow, right? Because uh, this is normally provided, lah, all right, including Q. Uh, basically, Q is also a function of Y, uh, but normally it's provided lah, in the case, all right? In, um, because we are looking at steady and uniform flow, right, basically. So Q would be uh, steady, all right? So uh, now what, what am I going to use here? Okay, uh, okay. Now this is just, so you know, to recap, lah, basically. When I talk about, because uh, previously, students tend to make mistakes, you know. For this compound section, right, when I ask you to find a uh, wetted parameter, right, students tend to give me, you know, for, for the upper section, students tend to give me the black, you know, the uh, sloping side plus the dashed line plus the sloping side. Uh, it's not, right, because this purple or uh, this dashed line is not a parameter, all right? It's just an imaginary line that we draw to divide it into two sections, all right? Remember that. So what we have, for example, in this case, uh, for section, subsection one, the wetted parameter would be the red line. Meanwhile, for subsection two, the wetted parameter would be the yellow line. Remember that. Eh? So for compound section is the addition of the, uh, the length of the yellow line and the red line, all right? Now, uh, this is another compound section, again, uh, if, look at this, you know, the this is exactly semi-circular eh, because the center of the circle would be just, you know, at this line where you are going to draw your imaginary line and you are going to split it into two sections. So you have there, the vector parameter of this would be, for section one would be the red one, for section two would be the yellow. Remember that, don't add the dashed line, okay? Students tend to make mistakes when they use the formula directly, where, you know, uh, when you look at the table, right, uh, whether parameter is given as B plus 2Y. So you tend to use B, don't, all right? Uh, because this dash line is, doesn't exist. Basically, it's not a parameter of the channel, all right? So remember that, okay, in this case as well, you are going to split it. Okay, it doesn't matter if you want to split it into two or three subsections, it doesn't matter, but as long as you get it, the wetted, get the wetted parameter correctly, right? So therefore, uh, sub, for section, subsection two, right? The wetted parameter would be the yellow lines, all right? Uh, the addition of the yellow lines. Meanwhile, for subsection three is the green line, not up to the top, eh? It's just up to, because it's wetted parameter, this part is not being wetted, eh? The top part. So only the part being wetted, all right? So therefore you have it. Um, now, you this one, I think we, we look at the some exercise already before this CQI slide. So you try this out, okay? Uh, and then you can try the graphical method. I think I described this already earlier. 
Uh, this is a sample uh, where I substitute why not one. I have this is uh, is still small, smaller than 4.562. So I increase my why not. I have 5.217. Oh, I know it exceeded, but you know, when you do draw two points, it's good, but uh, at least when you want to draw a line or a graph, you need at least three points. Uh, this is in our course, eh? but when you do your research, your project, three points are not enough. You need more. All right, I think best would be, it depends on who, uh, what expression you have, whether exponential, logarithm, uh, you know, uh, relationship, it depends, all right? For linear, uh, you know, normally it's, it's best to have more than five points, all right? It's best, okay? So, for example, in this case, all right, uh, because I said if I have zero here, of course, the whole thing would be zero, right? Because there's no depth of flow, right? Uh, therefore, uh, I, I actually, right, it's best if you don't need to draw it to zero. Uh, you just draw, you know, the three points is enough already. You don't have to connect to zero. Because sometimes what you did is you might not want to start with uh, zero. It depends, all right? It depends, okay? If the grid is uniform, you probably don't want to start with zero. Uh, it depends, all right? So therefore, how do I find why why not? Now, my y ax my y axis is why not? I don't mind if you switch the axis, huh? I don't mind as long as you understand. If you want to put your x axis as y not, it doesn't matter. So now I put my x axis as a r to the power of two third. My y axis as y not. So I know that. A R to the two power two third. I need to find why not for this value here, four point five six two. So what I did is I indicate four point five six two. I draw a vertical line straight where it intersects with my graph. All right, the graph that I just drawn. So uh, draw once it intersects, I draw a horizontal line to read my why not value. So what did I get? Is one point one. It doesn't differ much from uh, your, you know, the, the answer that you obtain from your calculator, that you solve using your calculator. It might differ a bit because when you plot graph, all right, our point and our graph, uh, you know, is not as accurate as calculator, all right? You know that your calculator has, you know, accuracy of up to how many decimal points, right? All right, so therefore, all right, uh, another few minutes, uh, just another three minutes. I think I'm going to finish this up first. All right. Um, there you have looked at how you are going to solve why not using um, calculator, using graph method. Depends. Read the question properly. Is if the question doesn't state any method, you can use any method. But of course, the easiest method would be using a calculator, right? So if the uh, question specifically state you need to use design chart. That means you need to use this design chart. Now, the design chart will be provided to you because you are not going to draw this out, right? <laughs> um, you don't have time, basically, right? So look at this. This is the design chart. You have the line. All right, the first line where it says bullet will be the circular, <laughs> basically, right? You have the rectangular. Segi empat, Z is equal to uh, zero. You know that this is a triangular, right? If Z is equal to zero, uh, sorry, this is a trapezoidal, okay? If B is zero, it becomes a triangular. If Z is zero, it becomes a rectangular, all right? Therefore, Z zero, you have this line here. Uh, all these are trapezoidal. Uh, lines for trapezoidal channel. What lines are there is, now, uh, of course, this line tells you the relationship of uh, your x and y axis, all right? Um, so your x axis is a r to the power of 2 over uh, two over 3, all right, divided by b to the power of 8 over 3. Now, if you are using circular, it is divided by d to the power of 8 over 3. What is your d naught here? d naught is the diameter, eh? if you look at this diagram here. Now, what is your y-axis? y-axis is y over b. b is the width, 
of your channel, all right, the bottom width of your channel. And then uh, if you are using circular, if you, your question is about circular uh, section, you are, uh, it, it is, uh, you are going to refer to Y over D, not, all right? So I hope this is clear. Now, remember, we have obtained this using the expression. We know that using this expression, we can solve for Y not using calculator, using graph, or using design chart. Now, how are we going to do this? Look at this. Um, what if you look at x axis, right? You need to find a r to the power of two third divided by b to the power of eight over three. So you solve for this value first. In this case, a r to the power of two third, you have found it earlier, right? In this expression, this is a r to the power of two third, which is this expression here, which is four point five six two. So you have four point five five six two divided by b to the power of 8 over 3. Your b would be 5 meter to the power of 8 over 3. So therefore, this axis, the value that you should read from is 0 0.06241. This is the log uh, graph. Log, log, eh? Log, log graph. Remember that. You look at this value, 0 0.01, 0, 0 uh, this would be 2. Okay, 4, 6, 8, 0.1, okay? So 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.81, okay? That is how you read it, all right? I think you have learned this during your lab, um, your um, soil mechanics lab where you do sieve analysis, right? Uh, you are going to plot using this uh, graph. Uh, either you are using semi-log or log-log graph. Lah. I think maybe semi-log. That means one side only uh, log, all right? So read the value 0 0.06. Okay, it should be somewhere here. Eh? Eh? Oh, okay, oh, I didn't have the answer here. Oh, I think I deleted. Okay, so read it from here. That means you are going the same thing. So you draw, uh, for example, somewhere here, eh? you draw a line. Now, intersect with, since now your Z would be, what is your Z value? Oh, this is a rectangular, okay. So, it's a rectangular channel. So, draw it up to the rectangular line. So, draw one line, horizontal line across where you can read the value of Y over B. Once you have the value of Y over B, your Y would be this value times B. So, you are going to get an answer. Now, I... I thought I have the solution here, probably I deleted it already. So I'll, I'm going to share the answer in our next class. All right, so try it yourself first. It should be, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't differ much from your answer from the graphical as well as your uh, method, uh, your answers from using calculator lah, basically. So therefore, oh, there, I thought, okay. Okay, it doesn't show up. So therefore, okay, and now it show up already. Okay, so you have there y not over b when you read it, it's about zero point two two. So therefore, your y not is five, which is a width times zero point two two. You have there one point one meter. Okay, so okay, how can I do? It didn't show up. Okay, so therefore, um, okay, uh, you have there. Now try this activity. So next class, I am going to uh, we will discuss the solution for uh, all these activities. All right, um, I have here. So I just skip through so you can. All right, okay then. So I think that's that's it for today. Is I know that it's a bit too much to all right for today. So do you have questions so far? Guys? No, doctor. Oh, um, but, is everything, uh, but I, yeah. want, I have a question only. But the slides that uh, the activities with the answer you will send to us or in author? Mm -hmm. um, I prefer not to send the answer first before you attempt it, before you attempt to right. answer it. Okay, okay, doctor, thank you. Okay, but but I'm going to upload this YouTube video. You probably can get, you know, the snapshot, uh, the, the snippet of the answer from that. <laughs> Is it okay? Okay, okay, thank you. All right, okay, you're welcome.
Yang lain ada soalan? <laughs> Maybe What about you, attendance? Uh, yes. Attendance, no, uh, because I'm recording this, I'm going to take the attendance from the list from here. Uh, don't worry. Okay, thank uh, you, doctor. I have, I have all the list here, so don't worry. But there are some people who doesn't show up, eh? there are only 47 of you. All right, so five of you are not here. So, okay, uh, if we, you don't have any question, um, I'll see you next Monday. Is it okay? Okay, okay, doctor. Doctor. okay, doctor. It's okay, doctor. Okay, see you guys. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. I'm just going to say, just in case, if you have question, right, you may ask me. If you are too shy to ask in front of everyone, Okay, doctor. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome.